marriage is keeping Americans poor. And what I really mean to say and what we're going to explore in today's video is, is marriage like worth it anymore? And when I say worth it, I mean financially. I don't mean emotionally, romantically. Let me stop and say this. I'm married, right? I, Frank Pace, am married and I love my wife. And I don't have to say that on video to prove my love to my wife. She knows I love her. I am specifically trying to explore here this crazy trend in America right now, which is a majority of Americans are starting to opt out of marrying. And there's a lot of different reasons for this. But today we're going to explore the financial reasons about why maybe marriage isn't the right direction for a lot of people to go in. The first reason why people are choosing not to get married is because there is a higher bar for marriage. So one of the craziest quotes that I saw when I was researching this topic was from a guy named Bradford Wilcox, who's the director of the National Marriage Project, whatever the heck that is. But he was quoted in saying, the doctor used to marry the nurse. Today, the doctor marries the doctor. When I read that, it struck such a crazy chord in me because I was like, oh, I get it now. Marriage has turned into more of a luxury thing and people with higher incomes are starting to marry higher income people, meaning that the bar for marriage is just that much higher. Standards that we hold ourselves to in terms of being ready to get married, it's astronomically high. Like high income people expect that their partners are, if they're not exactly there, they're close, right? Like they, they're, if they're not college educated, then they make close to six figures or they're close to making that type of money, right? And so I think the standards for marriage are just creeping up really, really high. And the reality of this situation is that a majority of individuals who aren't college educated struggle making high income, right? And the people who are marrying on at a consistent rate and consistent basis are high income earning people. And that's not to say that low income people or middle class individuals don't get married. They absolutely do. What I will say is that marriage almost seems to be more of like a status symbol versus like something that everybody does as soon as they get out of high school. Like if you look at the data, the data tells you that people are getting married later in life now. There, there's no longer a huge influx of people getting married at 20, 20 21, 22. That's not the norm anymore. More people are starting to get married in their 30s, mid 30s, almost 40s, right? And it's because they have high standards. And I'm no marriage expert. Look, this is not a relationship channel. This is specifically talking about financials, right? The reason why people do that is because the order of operations in which they want to get married is different now, right? People want to go to school, go to college, get a good degree. They want to be established in their career, making a bunch of money, and they want to take care of their debt, right? And that brings me to my second point, which is debt. Debt is a huge factor of why people are not choosing to get married like they used to, right? And that's because the world we live in today is crazy. I talk about this all the time. The cost of living, how much student loan debt is today, credit card debt, overall just wages being stagnant is leading to this ugly financial mess of people going into debt earlier and more often in their life. There's people who literally do not want to bring debt into a relationship, right? And so they tell their people that they're dating, hey, I want to take care of this student loans. I don't want to get married and have this debt in our relationship because I don't want to bring that to the table. And honestly, that is a big thing for people right now. And I mean, who can blame them? Like at the end of the day, if you look at the data, it tells you that divorces, 25% of divorces are because of financial stress, meaning that people come into these marriages, come into these relationships with financial issues and they can't work through them. It's the old adage. We've all heard it. We've heard, you know, divorce attorneys talk about this. We've heard accountants talk about this the world over. There's so much research to support that financial reasons is one of the biggest causes for divorces in America, right? And so debt is a big reason. It's a huge reason. And this is why I teach so much on my channel that you got to get out of debt. You got to pay for your debt because you don't want this to affect the rest of your life. It is such a big issue, right? It's such a big problem, specifically when it comes to getting married. The third reason why people are not getting married as much as they used to is because honestly, the cost of divorce is so 
high. And so when I was researching this, you know, I was pretty amateur s to the world of divorcing and what that means and how much it costs, right? And I didn't know the different intricacies of it, but when I researched it, it kind of blew my mind how expensive divorcing is. Like getting a divorce can be very expensive. And there's two types. You can either either have a uncontested divorce, meaning that both parties don't have a problem whatsoever. They both come to, you know, mutual agreements and they say, "You know what? We're just going to split everything down the middle. We're going to keep this clean." Clean. We're not going to go through custody battles if that people have kids. They keep it simple. Those divorces, the uncontested divorces, usually range anywhere between fifteen hundred to fifty five hundred dollars, just based on research. You can Google this for yourself. But if you have a contested divorce, meaning exactly what it sounds like, through there's a lot to figure out: businesses, crypto, investments, offshore accounts, custody. When you go through that situation, those contested divorces that's where you can really get raked over the coals in terms of how much money you're going to be spending. And it's very, very expensive. I'm talking like 40000 on the low end and 140000 on the high end. And those are just estimates. So it could get ugly. I mean, I'll see reports of people paying $200,000 for a divorce. Now that's people who have very complicated situations in which, you know, custody is an issue, trying to figure out all the children's stuff is an issue. So what I'm basically trying to say is there is a huge cost and a hefty price you have to pay if you don't pick the right partner. And I think that is a big, big deterrent for people who are trying to be married. They realize that like, look, 52%, nobody goes into it thinking like this, but just, just follow me. 52% of marriages end in divorce. So you got literally a 50% chance on if you're going to have to pay a hefty, hefty bill at the end of this thing, or if you're going to make it to forever, right? So the fact that 50% of people don't make it to forever, there's a huge vetting process that has to go on in terms of the person you marry and the cost of divorce is a huge leading factor as to why the why behind you not wanting to get married because divorce is expensive it's expensive from a financial perspective it's costly in terms of emotional distress it's costly in terms of life changes everything in your life changes you have to move out you got to separate you got to have new everything your whole life changes right and when you go through that that costs so much money really it begs the question two questions in my mind. It begs two questions. What's the opportunity cost of marriage? And you guys know I'm always talking about the opportunity cost. And is it worth it? And in my opinion, it just depends, right? I'm a married man. I love what we do, but you got to understand me and my wife met when we were 17. We went to college together. We graduated from the same college. We then got married right after that. We've been together for over 12 years, been married for almost seven and a half, eight years. There is a lot of history between me and my wife and we invested a lot of time into each other. And I think a lot of people rush marriage, right? Because they want to be married. Married, being married is a beautiful thing. It's a blessing. There's a lot of beautiful things that can happen when you find the right person you build a life together you build a family together you have children your children are beautiful like it's amazing but for most people it's really really hard to find an equal partner in that you know is it worth it it depends on what you're looking for if you want financial stress and burdens and issues and all types of things then you have to be able to sacrifice on the time side right because it might take you a little longer to find that person that is equally yoked to you financially or equally yoked to you in terms of your lifestyle because honestly the the pool like the the actual candidate pool for your partner is smaller than what it used to be because the bar is so high right? And that is my main argument for this video today. We have a high bar because of the economy and the society we live in, which is making it harder for people to find like-minded individuals that they want to marry that makes it advantageous for both people. That's all I got for you guys in today's video. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please do me a favor and like this video. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. 90% of you are not subscribed to the channel when you watch my content, which is absolutely unreal. Or subscribe to the channel because I do all this content. I post daily every single day monday through friday and we talk about these very complex topics how they apply to money what you can do for it my recommendations for you and how you can change your life and make sure you're going in the right direction so uh do yourself a favor do that and uh, i'll see you on the next video thanks